On this training, we will discuss sexual harassment tr training. Um, with most organizations, not every organization, sexual harassment is definitely something that you're gonna have to deal with at some point or another. Um, this is the first time in the history of the United States where you have four different generations working um, together at one time. So diversity in the workplace is um, huge at this particular time. But as it relates to uh, this particular training, we're gonna cover the following um, summary. So we're gonna understand what sexual harassment and um, is and taking the steps towards prevention and is everyone's responsibility in addition to um, this being a sound business practice. Um, we learn how to understand sexual harassment, particularly as it pertains in the workplace. We will look at the different uh, legal definitions and landmark cases, and we'll be able to review different behaviors and prevention strategies. Um, the overall goal um, with this sexual harassment training is to leave with a better knowledge of workplace policies pertaining to sexual harassment. So really identifying what you have, is it already working or what you may need to add some other additional things to it to make your policies that much stronger. Um, these are the specific objectives that we will cover, different principles, concepts, definitions, uh, handling sexual harassment complaints. Uh, what are some of those dangerous words? Uh, protecting yourself and preventing sexual harassment. Uh, protecting yourself against charges of sexual harassment. Informal procedures as well as formal uh, procedures as well. So let's just jump into um, some of the vocabulary associated with sexual harassment. So sexual harassment itself is defined as bullying or coercion of a sexual nature, or it can also be defined as um, an unwelcome or inappropriate promise of rewards in exchange for sexual favors. The next one is quid pro quo. Uh, that's basically an exchange of goods or services or tit for tat, or if I scratch your back, uh, you'll scratch mine. So essentially you doing something for someone else or someone doing something for you in return for something. A uh, hostile environment is the next vocabulary word. And that's where employees in the workplace are subjected to unwanted sexual acts or comments. Um, unwelcome is uh, just not wanted behaviors. A reasonable person is someone defined as um, setting a standard in terms of how to engage with others, but ultimately using your best judgment. And the last one is intent versus impact. So intent is for a specific purpose and impact is having a high force or a shock, but ultimately doing a behavior or making a statement to get an immediate shock out of someone is the impact. Um, so handling um, the sexual harassment complaint. So how do we handle this? So initially, if we come, uh, a staff member comes to us with a uh, sexual harassment complaint, we want to be sure that we take that report very seriously. We want to listen um, and sympathize, but don't judge either way because you are not sure if they're even telling you the truth or not. You need to hear both sides of the stories, but you don't want to jump to conclusions. Don't delay on what moves you're going to make um, for within this situation. Definitely take it seriously as possible. Respond to all of the concerns um, follow up on what is the company's policies and procedures as it relates to uh, sexual harassment. Again, every organization should have a policy and procedure as it pertains to sexual harassment. Um, if you don't, please use this training to help you to get started with creating one. Also, you want to document um, everything that happened, everything that the reporter is telling you. Um, you want to get real specific dates, times, you want to get as much information as possible. 
Then you want to follow up on the complaint. Um, and lastly, you want to avoid using um, any dangerous words. So what are some of the dangerous words? Um, here they are right here. So when responding to a complaint, be careful um, that these words don't come out of your mouth. It's just teasing. It's no big deal. The people in our school would never do dot, dot, dot. I know he or she didn't mean anything like that. It's your fault for dressing so provocatively. You need to learn to handle these things. Just ignore it. He or she puts his arms around everyone. Why can't you learn to accept a complaint? You, I'm sorry, a compliment. Why can't you learn to accept a compliment? You must have wanted it. Otherwise, you would have told him no. That's how they do things where he comes from. It's just a joke. Lighten up. No one filed a charge, so our hands are tied. We've never had a complaint, so we don't have a problem. This kind of behavior is all part of growing up. It's a matter of hormones we can't control. If we had to discipline every student who used bad language, we'd never get anything else done. It's just a prank that got out of hand. So as you can see, these are all dangerous words right here that we definitely want to avoid um, getting ourselves in any kind of potential legal um, issues, challenges. So protecting ourselves and preventing uh, sexual harassment. The following checklist can be used to determine behaviors. Does this behavior contribute to achieving our goals? Could this behavior hurt my colleagues or students if they were hurt? Could this behavior be sending out signals that invite harassing behaviors on the part of others? Would you say it in front of your spouse, your parent, or your child? Would you say it if you were going to be quoted on the front page of the newspaper? Would you say or act the same way to a member of your same gender? Why does it need to be said at all? What business is it furthering? To protect yourself against sexual charges or sexual harassment, keep your hands to yourself. Don't talk about sex on the job. Never mix a discussion of social life with a job-related interaction, particularly if you are discussing a disciplinary procedure or possible upgrade, promotion, or hire. Keep compliments casual and fairly impersonal. Avoid jokes, words, phrases, and gestures with sexual meaning. Don't assume that a friendly woman slash man will be willing to go to bed with you. Assume only that friendly people are just being that, friendly. Respect a person's personal space. It's a case study review. And I actually, I will share a personal story. I was working in an organization. I was one of the very few amounts of African-Americans within the organization at that time. It was an older woman, Jewish woman. She was old enough to be my mom. We would go to lunch at least twice a week and she would talk to me about her son, her family, her husband. I looked at her as a colleague and a motherly figure. One day returning to the office, um, this woman that I worked with and respected touched me inappropriately. Um, I was shocked to say the least. I was not expecting it at all. I went to my office and closed the door and was really just trying to process that when the next time I saw her, she winked her eye at me. My case study, my, my, my situation is what would you do? Think about this. I'm gonna take a moment to pause and just think about what would you do if you were me in that situation? What I did was nothing and that was totally inappropriate. That was the wrong thing to do. What I should have done was to talk to my superiors and to let them know what occurred. 
um, but all behaviors are meaningful and purposeful. Reason I didn't is because I wasn't a full-time employee at that organization. I was a contractor. This was somebody who was a, a federal employee who was employed with the organization for over 30 years. She was respected by the individuals. She was a female. I'm a male, black male. She's a white older woman tenured with that organization. And I just felt that I would go uphill. Um, every time I saw her down the hall, I would avoid walking down the hall so I didn't see her, but I was really torturing myself. I just assumed that no one was going to support me. But I ask you again to have a discussion to review with yourselves, what would you do if you were in my situation? Let's take some time, about five minutes to process that. So now we're gonna to move towards the different policies as it pertains to um, sexual harassment. So there should be two types of policies, formal or informal. So a formal procedure is doing what is morally or legally responsible. Um, so pressing charges or having some form of disciplinary actions taken at the workplace. So those are the things that I should have explored, but I did not. I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what the policies were within the organization that I worked with at that time. But the purpose of having that um, formal procedures is to determine if sexual harassment has occurred, the guilt of the alleged offender, appropriate agreements or remedies to the allegation. Um, how initiated? Generally, the complainant, the school or a third party writes charges of sexual harassment, usually invoked when the behavior is serious or repeated and not amendable to informal procedures. Uh, informal procedures is a warning, is warning the person of the repeat behaviors or a referral to uh, an employee assistance program or suspending um, an individual termination. But this is all based on what are the company's policies and procedures and what's the most appropriate. But the purpose is to, um, we wanna stop the behaviors. Um, it should not be used for repeated or serious offenses, um, such as assault. Um, how it's initiated, it must be the complainant's preference to use informal procedures generally um, do not involve um, written charges. Um, formal procedures continued. Investigation is always required. Hearing or other due process proceedings um, has to be instilled as well. Um, outcomes, if harassment is found, a variety of sanctions may be applied. So obviously it would have to go to an investigation. Um, a complainant and alleged harasser may be interviewed, but usually not extensive investigation is necessary. A hearing or other due process um, proceeding, no. Outcomes generally harassment stops, or formal processing of complaint is launched. Outcomes may include an apology, a promise not to repeat the behaviors, transfer uh, one party, or a voluntary resignation of an individual. You wanna use this time to be a teachable moment on uh, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate types of behaviors. When you're working with people for many years, sometimes people can know the policies but really um, increase friendliness and forget the policies that should be um, practiced by all of the individual individuals that you work with. So internal policies on sexual harassment. Um, so you wanna know who to call, what's the process if you are someone who is involved um, in sexual harassment, who do you call? And then you want to also document the behaviors. Um, if those behaviors are not documented, then the phrase is, it didn't happen, right? Documentation, it substantiates the claim. You want to document and be as specific with that documentation. Who was the, uh, the perpetrator? What time was it? Um, you also want to list any other employees that were um, present because you may have to call them in to be witnesses. And then you wanna report it to the supervisor. 
or to human resources. But again, know your agency's policy. And you also, when you meet with HR and you meet with your supervisor, you want to quantify the cost of you leaving the organization, um, how much uh, training it would cost for that supervisor or HR to have to replace you with a new employee. Um, how much would it cost for that agency um, if you were to go into a, a lawsuit as an individual or if it was multiple individuals that were victims of sexual harassment? How much would it cost for a class action lawsuit? And also, how much would it cost to have a on-site consultant to come to the workplace to um, do a training such as this to help to eliminate sexual harassment in the workplace and or to implement um, policies and procedures as well. These are just some factors to be considered into determining whether um, the conduct rises to the level of actionable sexual harassment. So take uh, these are some takeaways um, to consider, like what is the frequency of the conduct? whether the conduct complained of was physically threatening, whether the conduct arose in a context where other gender related conduct occurred, the nature and severity of the conduct, the effect of the conduct on the alleged victim, mental or emotional state, whether the conduct was unreasonably uh, inferred with the alleged victims at the workplace, whether the conduct complaint uh, was repeated, whether others um, joined in the conduct, um, sexual discrimination, harassment policy, like you want to, you know, if you have a lot of these different boxes here checked off, these things, again, are going to be actionable um, sexual harassment um, examples so that it can substantiate um, your claim of what actually occurred. Um, and then at this point, I want you to open it up for questions amongst your team, ask yourself, um, what would you do? And also to see from your staff if they had any other examples of working in another company where they may have been sexually harassed and how was that handled and what were some policies and procedures um, used at those, those other organizations. So I hope that this training helped you and I wish you and your organization the very best. Thank you.